Welcome YouTube family. So as I mentioned today that I am in my Zen room for this video and I am going to be sitting down for this video. I normally stand up because I want to stay below my soapbox but still express and convey the message that is urgent to be sent to the community. And so I'm going to be trying to stay here and this room helps me do that okay so first i want to shout out first i want to shout out waffles more and jeremy and his family for hosting the cookout this weekend and i really had a good time it was definitely worth the drive up to pennsylvania and um, I also have some stickers and I won the guest to shed contest as well. So, which is really awesome. I got very strategic with that because initially I was told that the winner was going to win the snake from the Partho clutch. So I got very strategic, but I ended up winning this. So I won the shirt and some stickers. So that was pretty awesome. Now to get into the subject. Okay, so today I want to discuss with the community just five ways that we can improve our social impact and our social presence of reptile keeper and lovers in the community. And the first one I wanted to discuss was please support USR. Number one, um, it's very important that you always hear me say, support those who support you. And USOC supports us. Um, whether you are an individual donator or not, um, I do encourage anyone who are actually reptile keepers to please get a bronze, silver, or gold membership, whichever one doesn't matter but become an active member of us arc and promote us arc so that's number one number two find ways to support one another in the hobby even when it's difficult to do so i don't necessarily agree what everybody puts out in the community but you can support in a way by having conversations with individuals um there is people in the hobby for whatever reason or is not a fan of me personally and i don't need to know why um but i might still like content that they share or somebody might be on one of their podcasts or shows and i'm still going to support i'm still going to give you my view especially when there is no personal reason as to why um, the person feels the way that they feel because they don't know me personally and never met them personally or never even if I met them in person never had a social conversation with them so I'm still going to support if I liked your content before how you feel about me it's not going to change that I, I, that's just not how my DNA is wired up so support those in the hobby even when it's hard number three put the animals before your ego and this is a touchy one because people do not understand the importance of how live feeding impacts the community right now and i said this before if you're doing it to educate and not in a barbaric way it's necessary there is a young child somewhere on an adult who just bought a bull python or a reticulated python or a Burmese python who may need to see a video on how to appropriately and safely feed that animal. I'm all for those types of videos. However, if you're doing it to show the barbaric way that a lizard or alligator or a snake 
attacks with undertones of very disturbing music in the background or if you're doing it in a way that it's only to get likes or views and not to educate we as reptile keepers who really love the animals would ask that you please rethink that process rethink the why you're doing it put the animal before your ego educate the people when it's necessary but that is a very kind and humane way to do that number four understand the difference between youtubers and reptile keepers and lovers there is a difference there's a difference between breeders and reptile keepers and lovers. And what I mean by that, you can see a combination of the two. Um, most breeders are lovers of the animals first, and then we got into breeding. But then there are people who really don't have a, mag a big, large magnitude of animals. They're just doing the reptile thing as a way to get some YouTube subscriptions and to kind of build their platform off of the reptile community. And I get that and I support a lot of those. Um, I learn things from some of their channels because of the people that they may bring on. But there is a difference. The reptile lovers such as myself, YouTube is second. My podcast focuses on education and it focuses on the love of the animal, the proper way to take care of the animal. I'm very passionate about children getting the right directives of when is a good time for them to purchase animals, for parents to understand their place in that transition for their child, and for the emotional and mental support of reptile keepers and human beings as a whole, where reptiles actually provide a form of care, mental care for many of us. So I'm for that and that's what I'm going to always build my platform on. My platform is going to always be about the animal first. There are YouTubers who don't really know a lot about the animals. You know, they may have a few, three, four, five animals where, you know, compared to some of us who have all types of animals who have been doing this for a long time, myself, um, 30 plus years. So those people in our interest in the protection of keeping of our animals, it's going to be different naturally. And so you have to understand the difference. So you can't get angry at the YouTuber because their platform is used for something else. And the YouTuber can't be upset about someone like myself who's very passionate about how you're going to convey and display certain things out there in the media, specifically social media when it comes to animals because it can impact our keeping. Okay. And last and number five, number five, on your personal pages, and I actually shared a comment on my personal page earlier today. A lot of times, because people know we keep reptiles, they'll see something on TikTok or YouTube and decide they're going to tag it to us as reptile keepers because in their own ignorance, in their own um, not intentional ignorance, you know, in their own ignorance, they assume that it's going to be fascinating for us. When it is not fascinating for us or when there is a opportunity to educate, do that for those individuals. I, for one, will never share anything that doesn't put the animal first or puts a human at risk, a child at risk, um, or share a very unfavorable impact that if that person who is at, Florida U.S. Ark, who is contesting our rights to own a bearded dragon, to own a ball python, to own a olive python, whatever it is. And they can take that video and present it amongst a whole lot of other people who don't know or understand how we understand 
the common functionality, the common lifestyle, the common enrichment, the common behaviors of our animals. I will not share that content if it negatively or unfavorably impacts us in a realm that is already attacking us. And I ask all of you to consider that. Um, everything is not funny, you know. Everybody wants, you know, likes and shares. And that's great, but there's so many other positive things that you can like and share that would bring positive images to our community. And I am so glad I did this video in my Zen room. Those are the five. I hope you guys can enjoy and appreciate what I'm trying to say in this video and you know, share the content to those who may need a future or further understanding of the why some of us are against some of the things that they share and they post or and vice versa, help those who don't understand our passion understand us better. If you take our animals from a reptile lover that keeps, it will destroy us. It's, it's no different than, and I said this before, giving birth to a child that's taken away. It's, it's, it's that impactful. And if you don't feel that way, you're definitely not where we are, right? And that's typically the person who's on the other side of the hobby. Uh, maybe a little newer, you know, probably in it for some of like the pomp and circumstance, you know, that's, and that's fine if that's where you at. I'm not knocking that. But I, what I want us to do to understand each other a little better, so when these conversations are had offline, it's not so uncomfortable for one another to address the concern. So that's it guys, thank you. Always, always continue to support Lady Tiz Exotics. Continue to share my content. Um, and again, if anyone is looking to sponsor Lady Tiz Exotics, please reach out to me from today until November 1st. Anyone who sponsors either a live video or anyone who sponsors a video, recording such as this one that money will be going directly into the susan g coleman donation for the cancel walk that i'll be actually doing november the 18th in san diego so i appreciate you all love peace and happiness at all times positive vibes only thank you and have a amazing week